Hello and welcome to Outside In. My name is Steven and today we're going to be looking at a Meletrix spot welder. We're going to unbox it. We're going to build it following the instructions on their website. There is an advanced menu so we're going to dive into that as well. Let's get right to it. Now this is their website. Meletrix.eu. They have two versions. One version is for a uh, car battery. Another version is for a LiPo battery. It doesn't matter if you get the one for the car or the one for the LiPo. They both hook up exactly the same. They're both identical. The only difference is this one has a longer lead for the 12 volt battery. This one also comes with terminals for that battery. And just in case anybody is wanting to know this part, what car battery can I use? They also go into some detail about the kind of car battery that you should use for this. If you want to, you can freeze this frame and read that through. Let's get over to the bench right now. Let's get this unboxed and let's get this going. Okay. Now, like I said, we're seeing this bolt for the first time. It's my first time having one of these. So let's see what we get in here. Okay, connection sketch. Some hardware. Oh, looky there. Some gummies. Wow, interesting. That's pretty cool. <laughs> A little extra bonus. Some candy. And this is the 300 amp fuse. And foot pedal. Show you how it works. Because I want to try that anyway. I don't know that I would be using that. Okay, these are the welding leads. Very heavy nice thick i love these things very heavy silicone very flexible should work very very nicely okay now this is the going for the 12 volt battery and i'm going to cut the ends off and put an xt90 right here onto this so i can use this with my lipo battery this is the arduino board looks like this is the case and the fan is already installed looks like into the case okay let's see I feel something here this is probably I'm guessing this is the uh, terminals it is and that is all that's it that's the that's it all right so let's get started with this so let's just set this case out of the way for now let's take the arduino board out says to separate these two halves pull them straight apart and not try not to bend the uh, connectors would not be a good Okay, there. And that looks to me just like what's on the website. Let's 
just want to tighten them a little bit. Okay, so we got the um, MOSFET board assembled. Okay, so Okay, and then we put plastic washer We'll just put these nuts in here to begin with and then we'll put the two PCBs together. Tighten that just a little bit because we don't want to tighten too far because we those nylon nuts would be quite easy to strip out. So when we don't want to strip out those. Focus. Put these together. Okay, here's the two header. And here's the six pin and here's the six pin. So let's just put these together. Try to go in as straight. as you can so you don't bend anything then what we can do is adjust these nylon knots here So now we know that we're the proper spacing. Zoom out a little bit here. And now it looks like that these, that two more of these go on this side. Okay, come on. Get on there. <laughs> Tighten that down just a little. Don't over tighten it because you'll strip it. Negative spot welder would go on this side. And the negative for the power source will go on this side. Okay, I guess, I don't know. Um, Yeah, we can wait to tighten that down until the end. Now we have an extra nylon, so maybe they just put an extra one in there just in case, or we will find later on that we need it. So let's go continue on. This is important. Oh, I'm glad I saw this again. Okay, yeah, okay, what this is saying here is that um, sometimes the leads come with too much heat shrink on them 
and the heat shrink will get stuck in between which will create a gap which will cause bad connection so what you might need to do on your leads is you may need to cut off some of this heat shrink so we're going to check ours and see if we need to cut any off but these look beautiful laying flat heat shrink perfect size good nice flat contact so yeah just make sure with yours uh, that you have real flat contact with this because you need the best connection possible now these are the leads for the foot switch let me uh, remove Now there's three wires on here, but you only need two. We need to do a continuity test on this just to make sure we're getting the right wire. And the wire we don't need, we can eliminate. Now sometimes I see some of these where the black wire is the one that you eliminate. And the red and white wire are ones that you need so it could be on this one as well we might just need the red and the white wire Let's put it over on okay now I'm gonna guess red and white is the ones we're gonna need and the way you can tell that is to set your meter on continuity hook the two wires together and then push the pedal that's it that's the two we need so the black one we can eliminate okay so we can just cut this black one away Okay, now these two wires, strip them a little bit. The polarity doesn't matter, so it doesn't matter which one of these wires or which color is to what color. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we'll get the heat shrink on here. And then
All right, so our foot petal is done. Okay, so we probably should tighten these up now. Okay, yeah, like that. So just, yeah, screw this into that a little bit, and then that way it's easier to set it down inside there. And then unscrew it, pull it out. Zoom in here just a little bit. Okay, these washers set down here. Then the fuse goes on top of that. And the copper washers go on top of that. The positive spot welder lead goes on this side. Then the positive power source goes on this side of the fuse. Take the red cable from the pre-built kit accessory bag and shorten it to about 15 centimeters, which would be 150 millimeter. So let's see 150 millimeter so I hope this is not too short but anyway we will okay because it's gonna go over to here so let's go ahead and cut that to the right length then let's strip it back a little bit All right, now, this needs to go underneath this head right here. Zoom in a little bit more so you can see. You do not want to put it down here because it will break a connection. So it goes under the screw head. Just stick it in there like that. All right, now we need to feed this underneath the board to come out over here ok 
Okay. Now, this is where it's going into this block right there. That's where the fan is going. And I would say the label goes towards the board. The sticker on the fan should face to the inside of the case. This way it will blow air into the case and guarantee optimum cooling. Let's run the wire under the Arduino board. Okay, we need to loosen these screws here so we can get these wires plugged in. Now the black wire goes in the in the hole closest to the outside of the case. Goes in that hole. Then tighten it down. Tug on it, make sure it's in there good. Then these, the wire that was over here to run under the board hooks with the positive of the fan as well. They both go together and they both go into this hole right air and tighten that one down tug on it make sure it doesn't come out they're in there good and solid Tighten these down, this one down. Now I'll take the top half of the case and stick it on. So let's stick it on. And I would say, all right, there we go. Just like that. It's down flush. And now we just put these screws Okay. And then this is the rotary encoder knob. It's got a flat side on it, so make sure the flat side in here meets the flat side on here. And then push it down. And it said if it's too tight, you can heat it up with like a heat gun a little bit. And it should go on, but if it's too loose, like this one is a bit loose, add a layer of painter's tape. Don't get carried away with the painter's tape because it doesn't take much if it is a little loose. It looks just like the picture on the website. Cut the ends off here.
we're going to take a look at the interface of the spot welder. We need to plug the battery in. Let me zoom in so we can get a better look at what's going on here. First thing you want to do, look at is right here in the top left corner it will show you if the welder is in manual mode or auto mode. In manual mode the foot switch can be used to activate a pulse. If it is in auto mode, the pulse will automatically be triggered after a short delay when both welding tips touch the nickel strip. In the middle, it will show you the weld counter, how many times you've welded. It looks like I've welded 72 times. The counter increases automatically every time a pulse is activated. The W stands for welt. Right over here on the on the top right corner, you see the battery bar indicator, 12.7. It'll still show full, and then it'll start showing gradually lower, the lower your voltage goes on the battery. And this number here, 24 milliseconds, MS for milliseconds, the well is the weld pulse duration and it can be set by turning the rotary encoder. The maximum limit is 100 milliseconds by default. And this maximum can be changed in the system menu if you need it to. And that is a hidden menu, but we will be getting to that, uh, how you access that menu and additional settings. But yeah, if you wanna change the pulse rate, just turn the dial counterclockwise to go down clockwise to go up. The bigger this number is when you have your leads on the nickel plate and you pulse, the bigger this number, the longer the amps will stay there for use with like thicker metals. If you're using a very thin metal, this number you want to be very, very small. We're going to start out with a 10, a 0.1, I believe. So and I think there I want to tr start with like a five milliseconds. This does go up to 100 milliseconds and it can be changed, but it's not recommended that you change it. The next thing we want to look at is the main menu and the main menu is activated by pushing down on the control button right here. Push it down and now you have auto pulse, battery alarm, and short pulse. For the auto pulse and then you click activate and then turn the dial to where it says on and then push the button again and now up here it says auto so when you touch your leads down on your nickel strip it will pulse within uh, but then you can change how long it takes and we'll get to that as well but just don't touch your leads together that's not a good idea that could be big big spark Okay, but for now, I'm just going to set this back to off. I want to start with using the pedal once we get to that point. The next menu option is battery alarm. Okay, it's set to default at 11 volts. That means once your battery gets down to 11 volts, the alarm will go off and let you know that your battery is getting low. You can change this by turning the dial. It goes up to 12 volts. Wow. And goes down to 7.4. Um, wow, I don't know what you'd use that for. <laughs> I wouldn't want to take a LiPo down that far. <laughs> Not a 3S. Uh, but it's set to default at 11, which is, which is where I would rather keep it. Okay, now the last option is short pulse. The short pulse is meant to preheat and clean the weld spot before the main pulse takes place. The percentage can be adjusted down to 0%. And at 0%, it turns the short pulse off. I don't know how high it will go because it doesn't say on their website. But I'm going to assume since the other set at 100, this is probably also set at 100 milliseconds, I'm guessing. But anyway, yeah, they're saying 12 is is recommended. So we'll just leave it at 12. 
another cool feature about this is that you can see how many amps your pulse is taking. If you are concerned your battery voltage is getting low and you want to see because you're not getting good welds, you want to see how many amps you're pulling out of your battery. All you need to do is, I just want to show you what the measurement feature does. Okay, now I'm hooked up to the foot switch. So you put your leads down, now push the foot switch and then hold it. Don't let up on it, hold down on it. Okay, if you hold down on it for a few seconds, now you have some new information on your screen. 444 amps is what that pulse took from the battery. So that is a pretty cool feature, I like that. But here's the other thing. You can't do any more welds until you push this button down to make that screen go away. So when I push the button down, it goes away. Now you can start uh, welding again. Now for the hidden menu. You have to do a special step in order to get to the menu where you can change the max pulse. And what you do is you unplug your spot welder from your battery. Okay, before you plug the battery back in, you hold this control button down. It's kind of difficult to do, <laughs> but you have to plug in with one hand, push this button down and hold it, and then plug in your battery. Like I said, it's kind of difficult to plug a battery in with one hand. And then, once that first screen appeared, then let go of this button, and now you're in the uh, system menu. If you go into the settings, you get max pulse, sets the maximum welding pulse time that can be set during normal operation on the main screen. The default is 100 milliseconds. This should be good enough for most users, is what they say. You can increase this voltage up to 500 milliseconds. However, be careful when using such high pulse times with a powerful car battery. The MOSFETs may not withstand the high current for such a long time. So that is good advice. So yeah, just be careful. 100 milliseconds is way more than you'll probably ever use. But if you did want to change that, you would highlight the max pulse, which is highlighted now, push down the control button, and then you could turn the rotary to change that value. But I'm just going to leave it to where they set it. Okay, also in the settings menu, there is a battery calibration. Now they're saying, quote, please do not use this feature. It is buggy in the current software version. Um, so I'm assuming they have this in here because they are working on getting this to work. So if you do use this, use it at your own risk. It says here you can calibrate the measured battery voltage. The measured battery voltage can be off by 0.1 to 0.2 volts. All right, let's go into battery calibration. Okay, right now it's showing that this battery is putting out 12.3 volts. So how you would do this if you want to mess with this, if I put a voltmeter on this battery and it's actually showing point or 12.4, then all I would do is turn the rotary to 12.4 or whatever that may actually be. I'm just gonna leave it where it's set. I'm not gonna mess with this. Display here, what the display does is you, if you push the control button, it comes up with normal. And then if you have this mounted upside down, you can turn this button, turn it to adjust. Cause see, if I had it upside down right now, then it would be writing a reading right side up. So if you have to mount this upside down, you can invert the screen so you can read it. And then there's the boot menu. Functions in the boot menu are to reboot. This will reboot the spot welder. If you want to do a safe reset, everything is reset except for the weld counter and the battery offset and the display orientation. And then it reboots the spot welder. But if you choose full reset, it resets all values to the factory defaults and then reboots the spot welder. Okay, it's saying attention. With the current Arduino Nano, it cannot automatically reboot. To finish the reboot, 
you need to unplug the power of the welder. I guess the only way to get out of that menu now is just to unplug it and plug it back in <laughs> because I'm not going to click on anything in there. So I'm just going to unplug this and then start it back up. So now let's see if we can do some playing, a little bit of playing around. We are, we're actually going to do some tests. I didn't want to finish this video without doing some kind of tests. And if anybody has anything that they would like to see me do that other people haven't already, a lot of people use spot welders, so there's a lot of things that that other people do that um, probably you don't need to see me do. But if there is something special you'd like to see me do, that'd be great. I could create a video for that. Now this here is showing point one. Pretty, pretty thin. Five milliseconds actually should definitely weld this. I'm, I'm going to assume that it will. We'll just back it off a little bit. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay. So we're set at my five milliseconds. And we'll, and I have this hooked up to the pedal. And then we'll do a pulse too, so I can show you. All right, let's see. Um, that looks that looks good, but I don't know. <laughs> let's try and see if it'll come off. How well it comes off? Oh, goodness great! Oh <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, that ripped right through there. Wow, that ripped right off, and left it on the my board here. So that's awesome. Point one works great with five milliseconds okay this one here is more I think it's around 0.15 I think point 0.13 so around 0.13 but let's try that so let's see how it does at five milliseconds all right. I said that looks pretty good too, but let's try pulling it off and see how it does. Oh man. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, that left two holes again. Okay, now what I want to try is I'm going to go in here and set this auto pulse to on. And then we'll set the delay. Because after you activate the auto pulse, you need to set a delay. So it's currently set at two seconds so that means that when I set the weld leads down it'll count to it'll be two seconds before it actually pulses or if that's too long we'll just do two and see how that feels alright let's but just be careful you don't touch these leads together okay wow Okay, now let's see. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that... Uh. Alright, let's try that again. Not, I'm not sure I got that in the camera, but let's try it again just in case. Now, remember it said it two seconds. So, whoops. And that sparked good. So, but usually a spark means you're not getting real good connection. But still, that. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, we messed our connection up a little bit with the board, with, the, with my piece of metal here. So, let's try this again
looks pretty good but like I said this is point one two so uh, yeah yeah definitely left holes Let's see how thick this is okay this is point two I doubt this is gonna do anything at five milliseconds but let's just see it what it does at five milliseconds yeah it didn't feel very good and that doesn't look very good but let's see <laughs> That surprisingly was pretty was a little tough to get off of there okay so let's uh, crank it up to 10 let's go to 10 and see what it does all right here we go at 10 milliseconds point two that that looks pretty good though that does look pretty good all right let's see if this rips through or not no it doesn't but wow that one side well actually no all right let's um let's go 17 on point two I mean point two it's it's uh it's harder to do point two that's for sure that felt pretty good Let's see if that how easy that comes off. <sighs> My goodness. Didn't come off too easy and it looks like that's in focus. One, you know, it looks like we got one hole there. On the negative lead so let's push it up to 20 and try it again and see Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. All right, let's see how easy it comes off. And that looks like, if I see that right, it looks like four holes to me. So that did a very good job. Now I guess what we could do what about these two pieces together that'll be a point three all right let's you know what let's try it that was showing point three five I believe okay so let's just see what it'll do if it will go through both of these and if we're gonna do point three five then we better crank this thing up I'm gonna start it at 50 and see if it will even if it will at least try to go through there through both of these me move us over just a little bit well wow that looks pretty cool but I doubt I don't know I'm just gonna say no <laughs> this is not okay I'm picking up both of these at the same time oh my goodness no way 
That was like 0.35. God, this is not. Oh, wow. That was craziness. Wow, it, that won't even come apart. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is pretty awesome. 0.35, it went through both of those. And it was hard to get it off of the board. They did, yeah, it left residue, it left metal on the, on here. So that's pretty awesome. There you go. Now you have to get one of these. 0.35 and it welded right to there with no problem at 50 milliseconds. And that's only half of what it's rated to do, or it's what it's set for default. So that, I'm just going to put it back down to 22 anyway. Okay, so that is it. Okay, so let's go to me. All right. <laughs> wow, that was pretty awesome. Thumbs, I would say two, two thumbs up on that. Two thumbs up. Because, yeah, that was crazy. Um, actually, yesterday I was having issues with this welding. And I think what was happening is that this battery that I'm using um, came with a Dean's plug on it. And I don't know why they do that. So what I did was I, um, and I was using an adapter to adapt up to the XT90. So what I decided to do is I decided to cut the Dean's plug off of here. And please let me say something to anybody that wants to do this, that don't really have a lot of experience. Lipo batteries are the most, I would say, the most dangerous batteries you can mess with. I have safes that I put these in. Um, I use little bags. And then I use the bag inside big bags uh, just to be safe. But if you're going to do like I did, I changed the plug on this from a Dean's to an XT90. I cut one side, only one side, one wire off. I tend the wire, then I soldered it to the plug. The best way to do this would be to have heat shrink on each one of these wires, cut one wire off of the other plug, just one of them. So you're not going to accidentally short anything out. You do not want to short one of these batteries out. That is can be an extreme nightmare situation, believe me. <laughs> For sure. Okay, but yeah, then Put your heat shrink on there, okay? And then do one side at a time. Put that protection on that. So when you do cut the other one off of the other plug and you do bring it over, you don't accidentally touch this other wire to short the battery out. So yeah, use all precautions, especially when you're using, you're messing around with LiPo batteries. Um, but since I put this XT90 on this battery, Wow, this spot welder is throwing out a lot more amps than it was before. So also, um, I'm using the car version of this spot welder because I wanted to be able to keep my battery farther away from the welder with sparks flying around. Um, so that's why I bought the car version of this because the leads are longer. This is another reason why I think that I'm not getting the true amps out of this battery because the leads are almost, I would say about twice as long is if you order this with just four lipos um, the little lead that they send you to plug into your battery uh, my leads now because i got the car version is the, about this long so that extra length is reducing the amount of amps that it's going to be able to pull out of this battery and put into that machine but still it was showing i think i've seen today it was showing 444 amps which was way over the what 330 it was showing yesterday and their website recommends that that you have at least 400 amps 400 amp battery to get any kind of decent welds so yeah keep that in mind 400 amp at least so I hope you got something out of this review unboxing tutorial video whatever or to uh, <laughs> how to do um, it was a lot of fun making this. I hope you got something out of it. Comment below if if you did get something out of it or if you have other information that maybe other people can benefit from, please leave that information in the comments below. 
If you want to ask me a question, if there's something that you would like to see me do with the spot welder, please leave that in the comments and I will try my best to be able to create another video for that. Always remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and always find somebody that needs to smile and make it happen. God bless and take care.